Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and welcome to update 35.3, another Interstellar Visitor update. So, before we get started with the update of course, today marks a very special day for Universe Sandbox. It's currently uh, August the 24th as of filming this and this marks the 10 year anniversary of the game being launched on Steam. 10 years! So to celebrate the milestone, they're putting the game on sale as well. So if you want to pick up the game, it's currently uh, on a discounted price until uh, August the 28th. Um, and yeah, the team have put out a little message um, about the game. So they've said, over the last 10 years, we've added many new features to make Universe Sandbox better than ever. From simulating liquids and gases flowing over planet's surface and lasers in 2019, to realistically simulating planet atmospheres and actually terraforming planets in 2023, which was a really good update. And um, many other uh, graphic changes as well. Uh, and they have way more planned. So, uh, improving collisions to re release friction and craters and simulating atmospheric drag, which allows meteors to burn up in the atmosphere. That'll be really cool to see. So this is a bit of their future uh, roadmap. Adds in basic life to simulation where life grows, dies, and can be eaten. Interesting. Bringing universe sandbox to phones and tablets, iOS and Android. This is things, I see this in the comments all the time. People have been asking it for years, absolutely years. So, good to see it. that's still um, being in works. Because people ask all the time about it, and all I can tell them is it's still in development. You know, you don't hear... Um, don't, we haven't heard much about it in a while, and a lot of people are still asking, so there's a very, very keen audience for it. Um, a long-term goal is stretch years into the future and include detailed planet surface so you can fly over mountains and through canyons. So we're getting, that's going to be like the space engine update. Uh, that would be brilliant. Wow. More planet customization with custom maps or images, like a picture of your dog. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure um, that would be interesting, but we'll be able to import textures, um, say like, almost like the Uranus moons. You know, be able to get um, get those textures in. You know, even Triton, for instance. Yeah, a bit of Uranus, Neptune in there. I say Uranus, didn't I? <laughs> Whoops. Um, but yeah, so learn about what we're currently working on in the 25 roadmap posts. So they've just put a bit more about. Um, we're incredibly grateful that we've been able to continue development in Universe Sandbox over the last decade, and we're humbled by the ongoing support of our community. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to make this crazy game. We're proud of what we've accomplished since Universe Sandbox was first released on Steam in early access 10 years ago. I'm excited about everything that's still to come. So that's a little post they put out on uh, Steam today. So um, to the team directly as well, a massive thank you to all the support they've done on the game for the last 10 years as well. It's great to see it still going after all this time. Thanks for the support that they've given me as well. Um, behind the scenes with a few bits and pieces as well. Um, yeah, absolutely amazing. Thanks to the team um, for the wonderful um, game they've made for us. I mean, it's one of my all-time favourites. Um, if you couldn't already tell, because I've been doing videos on it for over nine years now, so <laughs> only missed one year of it being out. Um, and it'll be my own ten year uh, next year as well. Um, but anyways, on to the um, update itself. So, in the light of day, the daylight view now shows illumination of a planet in real time as the planet rotates and orbits within simulation. Previously, it's a static snapshot of daylight on a planet. Interesting. Comets from beyond the solar system. Watch this comet uh, free, is at 3i slash Atlas, the third ever discovered interstellar visitor to our solar system, passed on its journey through space and compare the trajectories of all three known interstellar visitors. Scientific notation. Astronomers, astro astronomically large and small numbers are already hard to understand, so we've updated our scientific notation to be friendlier. Aha. Okay, very good. So anyone for the mathematicians out there? Uh, more highlights. Watch what would happen to Earth um, if the moon were replaced with a black hole at the same mass or the same radius. Which simulation will think it will be more destructive? Ooh, okay. Um, see small objects in your simulation even faster by turning on markers by pressing M, previously I on your keyboard. Um, you can once again add custom colours to your human scale objects. Try making a radioactive green banana or purple pumpkin. Oh, okay. Because that was removed. Because remember, we had a bit of an issue with that with the size comparison this year. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Okay, so let's watch our interstellar um, travel here. Here it is. I'm guessing the uh, panel is going to be open in here as well, but there it is. So it's flying by. Let's see if we can. Sometimes it doesn't open straight away. Uh, there it is. There should be a little bio. There we go. There's a little bug still there. It doesn't always open. Uh, so here it is. So on July the 1st, 2025, astronomers detected the comet 3 is 3i, isn't it? Yeah, slash Atlas. The third ever visitor to our solar system in stellar space. It will make its closest approach to the sun on October the 30th, 2025, around 1.4 AU away. Okay. So that's October the 10th there. So a little further, so let's go all the way to the 30th. Which is roughly there. 
in between the orbits of Earth and Mars, as we can see. But unfortunately, Earth is on the other side of the Sun to get the real close view of it. So, pretty good. So then we have the oh yeah the other one here on I'm not going to try and say that. <laughs> First interstellar object found passing through the solar system shot around the Sun closer than Mercury at 0.255 AU, and then uh, two ice uh, Borisov. Borisov? The second interstellar object found was much farther away, getting as close as 2 AU before the distance of Earth to the Sun. Astronomers estimate that tens of thousands of interstellar asteroids and comets pass through the solar system each day, but are small, far away from Earth and travel at high speeds, making them hard to find. However, new observatories like the Verisi Rubin Observatory may detect more in the coming years. Very good. Cool. So there it is, flying by the uh, inner solar system. And as we can see, with enough simulated time, has a very close encounter with Jupiter in that direction, doesn't it? Look at that. So, see how far it takes to get out of the system. So, it's past Neptune by about 2027 almost. Know, about there, sorry. 2028. It's past the orbit of Neptune, and it is gone. Long gone. So, there you go. And with enough given time, it is completely out of here. So, by 2094, it is long gone. So, there you go. Very good. So, we can look at the trajectory comparison as well. This is also one of the other... Um, comparison to them all at the same time so there we go so it's got all of them within the same period look at that very good so we've got the very first one there so here we go so since 2017 our solar system had three known interstellar visitors so we have the first one here so there it is this is one that flew by mercury the very first one with a very strange shape wasn't it this one so there it is the game's not showing it in its shape but um, there we go so um, an asteroid that stingshot around the sun in 2017 and the first object observed within our solar system that did not originate here then we have the second one. I don't remember the second one, but there it is. So 2019, which is this one, just passing by Mars's uh, area. It's all the way over here. Cast passed through in 2019. And then the latest one, uh, Atlas here, a comet found in 2025 that made its closest approach to the uh, sun just inside Mars's orbit. So there he is, over here. This simulation compares the trajectories of each of the interstellar objects with their closest approach to the sun occurring simultaneously. The planet positions do not present where these interstellar objects pass through our solar system. Okay. Astronomers estimate that tens of thousands of interstellar asteroids and comets pass through the solar system each day. Most are small, far from the Earth, travel at high speeds, making them hard to find. I guess that's the same as the other one. So, very good. Very, very good. So, we have a little comparison of all there. So, you can see the closest one getting very, very close in with the sun. Look at this temperature there. Yeah, definitely get a bit of warmth from the nearer the sun, doesn't it? So, there you go. Quite the, uh, quite the spectacle there. And we've got the other ones. Seeing by says, neither the new Atlas one, and then the further one out there, the second one. Very good. And there they all are, singing off. Look at the speed that some of them are travelling at. So Atlas is travelling the quickest out of all of them, according to this. Look at that. Very good. Hey. Ah, very, very nice indeed. Okay, cool. Right. One more thing I wanted to try in this update. It mentioned about the uh, light, uh, trying to do the light change. I'm just going to bring that note up again, and we're going to check it out. Okay, everyone, so here's the new feature concerning the daylight view. So if you change your Earth view map up here from, normally it's obviously 3D. If you open this menu here and you change it to the 2D map, then you can select the daylight view, because normally it will just be on the aerial. If you go to the, the, yeah, the daylight one, you get a good look of where um, the daylight region on the planet actually is, which is quite a cool feature. I've never even, I've never even really delved into the 2D features like on this, because normally you just get them up on the panel here but that daylight one doesn't actually show up on the data views here you have to get it from this side i think so uh, for instance yeah if we go back to the yeah the daylight there it is i think you can add it individually yeah there you go so doesn't normally appear with the other ones when you add all so yeah you got the secret one there so for instance we could do it with all the planets so let's go to let's do it with all of them yeah so let's go to mercury first so obviously that's gonna be a lot quieter so mercury Let's speed up the simulation so you'll really see the difference between the planets' uh, day and night cycles. So Earth, Mars. So we've got the inner the inner four planets first. Let's go ahead and speed up time. And you can just see how long a Mercury and Venus day take so compared to Earth and Mars' is 24 hours. Because Mars is, what, 24.3 hours, isn't it? So it's only a little longer than the Earth day. So Mars is almost identical to the Earth. Mercury and Venus, on the other hand, have a very, very strange day. And you can see that Mercury, for instance, and, or Venus, goes the wrong way because it spins the other way compared to the other planets. So, quite a cool look there. Venus also glowing hot with the lava as well. Very cool. We go, we throw Ceres in as well. Why not? So there's Ceres. It's very quick as well. Jupiter. Again, it's a 10 hour um, a day, I believe, isn't it? 12 hours? 10 hours? 12 hours, yeah. No, wait, no what, am I, what am I saying? No, that's the year. Hours. 
Nine hours. 9.9 .9 hours. I always think it's 10. Ah, close enough when you round it up. Um, so, Jupiter. Saturn. A little slower than Jupiter. Go to hours as well. 10 hours, 10.7. Uranus and Neptune a little longer as well. So 0 0.7 days for Uranus. 17 hours. I think Neptune is about 14 hours for Neptune, isn't it? 16 hours. So there you go. All the gas charts. Of course, as well, Uranus as well, since it's on its side, you know. It's going kind of the other way, like Venus as well. Very good. Well, yeah, nice little uh, nice little addition, that is. You can see how quick uh, how quick their days are going by. If we just slow it down to, say, six hours, see Jupiter, Saturn, quicker than everything else. Neptune as well, decent speed. Uranus going the wrong way. Ceres is a pretty uh, quick, speedy one as well, if we look here. 0 0.3. Nine hours for series. It's a small object though. Then you've got good old Mars and Earth's 24 hour cycle with their tilts as well. So you can see the north and south of Earth are currently uh, currently lit up. So if we go put Earth to the other side of the sun, we'll see that the North Pole will be the area in the light instead. The same principle with Mars. So very, very good there. And technically, Saturn. Saturn has a similar tilt to the old Earth, doesn't it? So if we let Saturn go around the sun for a bit. You'll see that that light area will go to the south eventually once uh, Saturn does a long rotation. And same with Uranus. That should, uh, in theory, change. There you go. So Saturn's now in the south. Uranus, you see that's changed as well, depending on where he is. So, and, and yeah, Neptune has a tilt. Neptune's tilt as well. So it'll be slightly different depending on where he is around the sun. So there you go. Uranus is a little more split there. Saturn. Jupiter's the one that doesn't probably won't change the most. But there you go. So that is the, uh, the daylight. Um changes there with that hidden panel that never really used but it is there so yeah pretty cool i like it it's a cool change yeah that's very very good but yeah with that all said done everybody that covers it for um this update it's only a small sort of miniature update adding the comment and a few bug fixes there's a load of bug fixes behind the scenes but i won't go through all of those um and obviously they change the ways the unit and measurements are and the uh, numbers and stuff as well oh yeah also the m button the markers wasn't it if we press just close that now press m Aha! Markers on. So it shows all the objects. Oh, that's quite a good little feature. Actually, I like that. So it just shows where everyone is a bit easier. So, yeah, Very good. Very, very good. Let's see if we just turn the goggles off. Yes, yeah, so it shows where all the planets are. Yeah, that's cool. If I just leave the asteroid belt, you can see where everything is just a little easier. All the major objects. It's cool. I like that. Uranus over there. So if we look at Uranus's perspective, you can see all the other planets in the sky moving around the sun. It's cool. I like it. So that's the M button for markers. Very, very good. So, what else have we got? Uh, any other highlights? I believe that's mostly everything. Oh, yeah, you can change the colour of the human objects again as well. So, for instance, if we were to have a chicken or the, was it the pigeon? Sorry, I say the chicken. Pigeon. <laughs> we had the pigeon around Uranus for whatever reason. Here he is. Can go, we can now change his colour options again, which you didn't, or which they did remove from the game in the last few updates. So you can have a red pigeon, or a, there we go, <laughs> a Uranus blue kind of coloured pigeon. There he is. No bit of the, uh, no bit of Uranus. So there he is. Yeah, there you go. So you can now change the colour of the human objects as well. Very good. Cool. And yeah, the rest of it's just all the cool the patch notes and all of that stuff as well. But yeah, there you are, everybody. So that does it for um, update 35.3, the uh, another Intercellar Visitor update. And also the game's 10-year anniversary on Steam. So again, happy birthday to the game as well. It's been a good run. Long may it continue. Again, thank you to all the uh, Universe Sandbox team, the devs, everybody, for all the support they do to the game and um, the support they've given me in the past as well. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, with that all said, everybody, let's see if we can go for 200 likes on today's video as well. If you enjoyed it, yeah, press that like button. Subscribe for more. Help us in the journey to 50,000 subscribers as we're closing in day by day now. We're going to get hopefully get there soon by the end of the year. That will be our goal. Massive thank you indeed for that. And yeah, that all said, done, everybody. Make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.